Hey everybody, it's Triple L and hey, let's talk about My Hero Academia Chapter 202. And before we even get into it, I just gotta let you all know, I am still dealing with copies, uh, sorry, copyright strikes. I got one uh, earlier today, so I'm gonna keep it safe. Uh, just gonna I can't throw images from the chapter but I'll try and throw images from other series or um, from other or from the anime itself because anime seems safe anyway I am very excited to uh, do this video um, 202 chapter 202 I actually really love it I think it might be my favorite of this arc so far which is a little bit strange because there's no real combat going on in it until the very end and it's just like, the introduction to combat but um, I really love it just for what ultimately seemed like extra attention to detail from the author and it was just uh, okay I'll, I'll get into that um once i get past the next part um the other thing that i'm really excited to talk about for this uh video is that i got a lot of nice comments from last week's when i had a volatile uh disagreement with the things that happened at the end of the chapter and uh you some of you guys also had respectful dis uh, disagreements with me as well and i really enjoy that i really enjoy whenever you guys disagree with me in rational ways because then it just makes for a good con a good conversation and it also just keeps me in check so you know i like that so uh the only thing is i don't want to bore the rest of the people with um the discussion about those comments so i'm leaving that till the end of the video and uh, if you just want to jump there i'll put like i'll make the video at that point say um answering last week's comments or something along that line uh towards the end of the video so you could just like look for it on the seeker bar or whatever uh and then it'll be a fun one uh i i'm really excited for that part because i i think that was worthwhile anyway um, let's just talk about this chapter itself. So what exactly am I really loving about this chapter? Well, it ultimately comes with just the conversations. It's, it's really the, the conversations. And the chapter started off in a really good place for me when you, it starts off with Mushroom Girl um, giving Tokoyami or trying to give him a throat lozenge. You know, apologizing, just reminding us like, hey, it's okay. This is, this is just a game pretty much. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I get into the stuff I love, there was one part that mildly bothered me, but only in like a, in a funny haha -ha way. Um, and it's the stuff with to uh, Toroki. And the stuff with Toroki just bothered me because I made a video about the, like, the whole uh, Dobby Toroki brother topic. And I, I'm wrong. And I, well, not wrong, but now the odds are significantly against me. And uh, I'm just not feeling it. So I have to go. Uh, I'm going to make a separate video for that. But it just, it, it, it bothers me just like, I, I, <laughs> damn it, man. Damn it. Okay, whatever, whatever. Not the point. Uh, going back to the things that I really enjoy and really love about this. Uh, yeah, um, one, how do I say it? The thing that I really love is that when you've been reading a manga for a really long time, one thing that I absolutely love is when authors kind of treat the characters like they have memory or treat the characters like they are as observant as readers. I love it when characters uh, keep doing their little quirks or their pun, no pun intended, their little quirks or the little mannerisms or the little, little behavioral patterns. I love it when the characters keep doing the subtle ones and I, I, I love seeing when characters call back to um, things that they've seen before and you know you, you will get that a lot of times in one-off moments in different chapters but this chapter just seemed like they were chock full of it and just to list off a lot of the ones that I really loved it's it's stuff like the kids all coming together and talking about how cool Class 1B is. It's stuff like Bakugo going off uh, and talking to All Might and asking about what's going on with One for All and being like, yeah, uh, what, what are you doing, Izuku, you dummy? Um, it's stuff like All Might flat out saying like, hey, be careful with Shinzo because Shinzo is related to these vestiges. And mind you, that one is like plot relevant. But it's just cool to see that plot element coming back in there. And it's cool to see All Might putting Shinzo into such a high kind of standing in his mind when he's talking about him. Other things going in there, it's stuff like Ida's characterization. Ida understands his classmates really well. This is something that's 
been happening in the background with Ida. We mostly see it with Izuku. So before this chapter, I thought that this was something that was significantly exclusive to the Ida uh, Izuku dynamic. But here you have Ida just finally acknowledging it outright and other people acknowledging like, whoa, Ida, like, that's pretty cool that you could tell those kind of differences in your classmates. And it's just Ida doesn't get a lot of attention anymore. But what he does is that he's effectively also becoming an emotional pillar in the same ways that, not the same ways, uh, in a bit of a more active way that Suyu kind of became an emotional pillar. But it's cool to see other characters recognizing that and finally being able to say it to uh, the fans themselves. Because one big issue that ends up popping up when you have these subtle moments happening is that maybe sometimes fans won't notice it. Um, and it's really unfortunate. It's, it's nothing. It's not saying anything bad towards any fan or whatever. It's just an issue of um, sometimes you might miss a little clue or a little subtle detail. Um, as for for Ida, I don't think it was super subtle because, well, you might have just eventually have gone to a point where you just say, "Oh, that's just Ida and Izuku." Whenever Ida is watching what Izuku's doing or making sure that he's okay, but the author put an effort to have that trait be developed ever since the stain fight and even though Ida isn't in the, the the fray even though he isn't dealing with everything um or involved in like the main villain conflicts i like that the author is giving him this kind of background development other moments were also also great oh sorry my words other moments were also great too like ashido pointing out that hey all might and izuku are really close and it's like yeah ashido Yes, yes, figure things out. Come on, come on, God, like, keep being suspicious of that friendship between All Might and Izuku, right? Uh, overall, this was just a chapter of good stuff going on in there. Whether it be possibly Sundere Bakugo, or Mineta th thinking that he's better than Izuku, or Tokoyami forming this weird friendship with Todoroki based on them being the protégés or the apprentices of uh, number one and number two, it was just a nice time of characters getting along and calling back on their various qualities and bringing those to the forefront. And as as a fan and as a longtime reader, it just makes me feel nice. It, it makes me feel nice that the author was able to bring all of this together for one chapter and just make it like a nice, fun time. I really love it. I really love this chapter. Absolutely. So with all that in mind, you know, once we like slip into the battle segment, uh, you know, my, my excitement <laughs> does kind of die down a little just because uh, Tetsu Tetsu has a a funny little internal, mo not internal monologue, it was an external monologue, but he, he has that little moment where he's like kind of reflecting, but then it just turns into him being overly simple. And, you know, there is a nice comedy moment there, but... Actually, yeah, it was fine. It was, it was totally fine. It was just a comedy moment and everyone freaking out about Tetsu Tetsu. And I think one thing I noticed, and it's, it's nothing serious. Um, when Pony was speaking in English, at least from the manga stream translation, uh, it seems like jo Juzo had a different font for one of his speech bubbles. So I wonder if he replied to Pony in English. But I don't see any translation notes, so I'm not too sure what exactly Manga Stream did and why did they change the font for him for that one. But I'm going to assume it was because speaking English. Anyway, um, ending this chapter off with Todoroki's uh, kind of blank face was... Yeah, it was... <laughs> It was funny. It was really funny, actually. He looks so unimpressed, man. I wish I could put a picture of it in the video, but the last time I put one picture in a video, Shueisha just found it and destroyed me. Oh, man, those guys. Anyway, well, that's the end of the main part of the video, and now let's do the fun stuff, specifically the commenter uh, replies. I like the discussion, and so just a few prefaces before we begin. Um, just know that... I am not attacking anyone. I really appreciate your comments. I appreciate anyone that points out a perspective different than mine, especially when you guys keep it civil. I really appreciate that and I appreciate you guys all the more for it. Another thing that I want to preface is because this is all going around that final page. I just want to like preface again. I have seen that line done a lot and I personally don't like that line. It is a personal hangup of mine. It is not speaking to the quality of the works because in one-off situations, it's totally fine. It's just, 
I've seen it a lot and it just kind of bothers me a little bit more than it should. And the one that I'm really thinking about is from Shokugeki no Soma when it happened to the character Megumi. Um, that one really bothered me just because when that one in particular, when it just feels like the authors don't have the balls to just give their character a straight defeat and instead have to try and soften it by saying that oh the, the character accomplished something greater or like you know add that extra little stipulation there and mind you there's nothing wrong with that a lot of times it's used to show that the character grew in some particular way or there's room for growth and that's totally fine it's just i get bothered when i see that line okay and the first comment that i'm going to address is uh luis pereira i'm a Apologizing if I'm mispronouncing that and also I don't know if I should pronounce it with the Spanish pronunciation Louis But I'm just gonna call it Louis um, Just for ease. I, I apologize if I mispronounced it altogether anyway, this comment goes first because um, This comment was is the one that made me really look at myself and really reflect and I'll just start with the part that made me reflect real quick uh, Specifically the part that goes moreover your attitude towards kendo is actually condescending She apparently has to be satisfied about narrow victory because she couldn't hope for more against a genius like Momo Or so you seem to think and I had to take a second and think well wait Am, am, did I actually sound condescending? I was like, yeah, probably, probably. Um, given how I felt last week, it, it could, have e could have easily come off as condescending. Then I had to think, am I actually condescending towards Kendo? Then I had to think like, yeah, yeah, probably, most likely. In my head, I'm not going to lie, I don't have Kendo in that high of a regard against Momo, especially not in certain arenas. So yeah, definitely, I, I would still uh, continue being condescending towards uh, Kendo under specific circumstances. That's the only little stipulation there, and I will explain a little bit about that. But just to give more context to Lewis's um, comment there, um, at the beginning he prefaced specifically uh, how he thought that Kendo went down which i think is very fair and also i very much appreciated the metaphor i thought that was a really good metaphor to explain it the 50 point lead and the five point lead by by the end of it um just painted that situation and so the ultimate thing i i should say before i start addressing a lot of this is that i do not think i was very sympathetic towards kendo and that is not very fair of me and at this point, I'll also bring in Hunter DRA's uh, comment here, uh, because you kind of like touch on something as well. You were explaining more about the story convention of it. Uh, specifically, you also you just elaborated and read out the, com the part of your comment that was critical for me. It was specifically, uh, often the message is that victory is a mental thing. So if you can make the opponent feel like they lost by beating them what they're good at, it's a true victory. And, and I and I get it. I get it. Like I, I agree with you. Um, that is the story. Like how the story works. It and they are rivals. Kendo is allowed to feel bad or to rate herself on things. Anyway, um, I should have been more careful. It was not my intention to make it come off this badly especially with like how lewis um, mentions here that she apparently has to be satisfied with a narrow victory um that was not my intention especially considering how the author had written her um the chapter before last week's chapter like he specifically took the time to write out that this girl had a bit of an inferiority complex developing when it came to momo and the way she was handling momo so with that characterization in place i agree from the perspective of a character who wants to prove herself it totally makes sense that she would rate herself hard. The character herself is consistent, and that is a pro towards uh, the Hero Academia author. And Lewis goes in there and illustrates a situation where, hey, Kendo went in severely underestimating Momo, and it's that underestimation that she is allowed to be kind of harsh with herself on. And you know what? totally fair now on the point of the condescension and also on dra's comment specifically the part which says if you can make the opponent feel like they lost by beating them at what they're good at now on those notes if kendo ever comes out and says hey my plan is to outsmart momo no matter what i am going to laugh at her it is going to be hilarious for me uh specifically because outsmarting momo just doesn't work so i do want to like uh, acknowledge to lewis definitely if it's going to remain on the mental battlefield if it's going to remain just a straight up where kendo thinks she can outsmart momo um 
I do think she her best hope is a narrow victory. I, I do think. And I, I think even then that's pushing it because there's just some things Kendo can't do. Um, and to answer DRA in that particular point, she is not ever going to be able to beat Momo in that kind of battlefield. Given Kendo's current disposition, imagine how badly she would feel if Momo, if she was told that Momo did not pay attention to her at some point during that fight. If at some point during that fight, Momo was still thinking about other things. But here's the reality, that had to happen because Momo can still produce her items and to produce those items we know it takes quite a lot of effort we know she has to list the components we know she has to understand the structure of it so while she's having all this pressure applied while she's having the situation evolve on her momo's still there and she is still rattling off the various components she needs mind you she does that super quickly but even by the virtue of how quickly she is able to process all of that it would be natural to assume that she could come up with a bunch of new plans in the in between Kendo's fist strikes even. If Kendo is going in there with that idea of outsmarting Momo, she she's not going to win. She needs to bring in other factors. Like one good factor to bring in is also unknown information. Momo can't do anything about unknown information and unknown information ends up being what saves the day for class 1B in this situation because otherwise Momo neutralized Kendo to a degree. And DRA, I understand what you're saying about the story convention, but we have to take into consideration the rest of Hero Academia. And specifically in Hero Academia, it is the, it's the series that premised not everyone is born equal. And we know that is exceedingly true when it comes to quirk quality. Kendo does not have an overpowered quirk. It is exceedingly stubborn of her if she is actually trying to outsmart Momo, given what Momo can do. Especially given what these people are trying to become, I don't think a hero is going to be someone who's going to be very stubborn trying to fight a villain on their home ground here, right? Now, personally, I would still, if I met someone like Kendo, I would still tell her that she should be happy about her victory, right? Um, but, you know, when I say that, I am be being ignorant of the character that the author has established. But in that particular line of thought, it's just... Even in your metaphor there, Lewis, even though she underestimated Momo to a point that it could become a severe mistake, she was still able to pull through. She was still able to exploit the thing that Momo is weak at, and that specifically, if you get Momo before the ultimate execution of her plans, it's fine. It's okay if you stop her. It doesn't matter how ugly it is, but you know, I'm very pragmatic at that point. But that's the perspective I'm coming from. Otherwise, as a rival, I totally agree. She should aim for more because that's part of growth and development. And one thing on growth and development for sure is that this has opened up the storyline for Momo and Kendo for the future. You know that this is going to be called upon later on in the series. And that's pretty cool to have overall. Also, Lewis, on your note of Kendo has ambition. That's cool and all. I just hope that the ambition itself isn't going in the direction of I want to beat Momo at smarts. That's just not going to happen. And if she's doing that, she has no sense of her own limitations. And that could be fatal for her. And if there's one thing that Hero Academia does, it's remind characters of their limitations. Next up, we had Neil. And uh, just for the sake of time, we're going with the ones that are pointing out different perspectives here on that thing here. Um, overall, though, Neil, I read your comment. I really liked it. And I also like your comment about Susie. I think Susie was one of my favorite characters after Constance in Little Witch Academia. Uh, but uh, anyway... Um, you had a, a thought here was uh, you saw the line of Kendo being disappointed as more of as Kendo being disappointed in Momo. That is really interesting. Regardless of whichever scenario this ended up being, whether it's that she's disappointed in Momo or she's disappointed in herself. Um, I do think that opens up the way for law development in the future for these two characters. And we're probably going to see some catharsis to this sometime in the future. And also, I agree on your ideas about uh, Class 1B in general and how they want to be uh, Class 1A. And one last person I want to highlight just because they had an amazing comment. And I believe, yes, I have loved it now. Uh, Brittany, oh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced. Brittany Ramjatan? I, I think that's how I pronounce it. Um, Brittany, I can't crit I can't like critique your comment too much because it's just you're flat out giving a play by play here. And the way you structure it, it's like like very reasonable, very reasonable. Um, one thing that I'll just pick out a really small part here. Uh, you pointed out a problem with false hype for Kendo, Momo and Tokoyami. It wasn't sub a subversion of expectations as much as it seemed to be awkward writing. And then you're wondering how people are going to react if back to Roroki lose. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, my personal problem was just with that one line there. But 
In terms of realism, I think that uh, the false hype is okay because it's it's fine when your friend thinks that you're super amazing and you fail all the same. I, I think that is fine on, on that note. In terms of it being awkward writing, I could definitely see an argument for that for sure. So, um, okay, this is a 23 minute video or 25 minute video. Let's cut it there. Hopefully I'll cut it down a little bit, maybe. I'll have to cut a little bit of Lewis's question but uh, yeah guys um thanks for all the comments and for everyone else who had massive comments uh thank you very much for uh, leaving them on the video and yeah let's call it there till next time i hope you have an absolutely great day